I'm so delighted to be with you today. This is my favorite topic. And I should tell you to start with that although I've done many things in my life, I've owned my own business, I've, done, I've been politically active, the most important thing in my life has been my children. I have seven children, and now I have 32 grandchildren. But, at the United Nations, Peter Smith is one of our strong activists, pro-life activists, and he says, is there hope for the future? Yes, Susan Royland says, 32 grandchildren. <laughs> but let me tell you, the most important part of that is, I have seven children, and all of the mothers, seven families of those children, are at home taking care of their children. And my youngest daughter, they don't make a lot of money, but she, she has her master's degree in education, but she has chosen her children to be her highest priority. And I believe that is my greatest contribution to society. All of my children and grandchildren are contributing. You just can't say that one or two children is what it takes in order to have children who can participate and contribute. Now, it's been almost 45 years, a little more than that, since 1977 when I attended a conference in the United States on women. Each state had their own conference and then we had one in Houston that was a culmination of all of those conferences. And they promoted eliminating stereotypes of women. Now a stereotype of a woman at that time was a woman as a mother. So they wanted to eliminate that stereotype. And so what did they promote? They promoted women getting into the position of writing books for children, of getting into the position of writing the stories for the TV programs. So now today, at least in the United States, and I expect it's much the same in your country, you see women, not that this is bad, but you don't see women as mothers at home with their children so much as you see women with a briefcase, you see women as doctors, you see women in many wonderful positions, but not glorifying that most important role as a mother. The Millennium Summit, which was a 10-year review of the Millennium Development Goals were created in the year 2000. And I had gone back to New York about three times in working in the negotiations and trying to influence the recognition of the family and of mothers. And we failed totally. There was nothing in that document that recognized the importance of the family in society. And one of the individuals who was over the projects for the United Nations for the Economic and Social Council said, because family was not mentioned in that document. There were no projects or programs for the United Nations that could focus on working with families. And I thought, what a tragedy. Now, I have passed out to you, and if you didn't get one, you can pick up one of these books at our booth at the Howard Center, just as you come in the main uh, building. Um, I decided that we needed to, to show that all of these goals could be met best with the family involved. And the subtitle of the book is Using Family Capital. Family capital is a term that we're trying to promote to achieve the eight millennium development goals. Now very quickly, I also we also have an excerpts from it in Spanish, so if you don't read English, you can get this in Spanish. It's not the whole book, but at least it's, it's important parts. Just very quickly, the, the goals, eradicate poverty and hunger, achieve universal primary education, promote gender equality and empower women, reduce child mortality rates, improve maternal health, combat HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases, ensure environmental sustainability, and develop a global partnership for development. <laughs> and I said, how can you reduce child mortality without involving mothers in the family? How can you improve maternal health without educating mothers in the family? How can you overcome HIV AIDS without talking about it in the family and trying to improve it? And every one of those goals. So we decided to do this book. Now I'm, I'm the coordinator and putting it together, the chapter on family capital, but there are, there are experts, experts in the trenches, the people who have worked hard on these subjects. In every one of these chapters, people who are showing ways that actually these things can be improved with the family. Now as we all know and as we've heard so gloriously, the mother 
is the heart of the family. Now I want to just show you a few slides that take some of the wording from the book that talks about the importance of the woman as a mother and in the family. We, we present in this book that women have unique qualities and special strengths. They're not the same as a man. They're, they're special in their own way. There's a complementarity between men and women. Again, not the same. We're not interested in an equality that makes us the same. We're interested in an equality that recognizes that there are biological and psychological differences between men and women. The woman who wrote the chapter on uh, gender equality is a teacher in a college, and she presents to the, to the students, the brains are different in a man and a woman. There's different things that they are especially capable of. You can read more about that in this chapter in the book. Within the family, if we want to overcome the problems of society, it's the loving recognition of our equal value as human beings and the unique qualities as a girl or a boy, a woman or a man. Within the family is where you raise your children to understand the importance of girls and the importance of boys. And to, as, as these people have so, so wonderfully done, raise the value of motherhood. This is not a problem or a disgrace or tearing women down. It's, it's their glory to be able to be a mother. And so there are differences that we need to point out. We need to help girls want to become mothers, want to get married, and want to become mothers. It's so important that we do that because society as a whole is moving girls away from wanting to become mothers and to be uh, have a family. And so we, as mothers, need to do all that we can. There's a book in the United States that's called Our Mothers Lied to Us. And it's written by a woman who, her mother was a part of the generation in the United States that I was talking about in the beginning where they wanted to, to change the stereotype of women as a mother. And she has discovered, she's one of the girls that was raised with that kind of a mother, that that's not where happiness is. Our mothers lied to us. So we as, as this generation of mothers, we need to teach our children the great value of motherhood. The woman is the heart of the home. The failure to respect both the value and the rights of each family member is a corruption of human values. The heart of the human problem is the human heart, and the mother is the heart of the home. The strengths that are unique to women are nurturing, reconciliation, and relationship building. We uh, launched this book at the United Nations on the 14th of May, just last week. And one of the news people that were there asked the question of Lynn Walsh, who wrote that chapter, well, is there any reason why men can't raise children just as well as women? Is there anything special about women in that process? And her answer was yes, especially in those early stages of life. Women are endowed with special characteristics that help them to be mothers. There's hormones, there's a lot of things within that mother that helps her to be more attuned to the needs of that baby than a man. Now that doesn't mean a man can't be a wonderful father and a great help, and possibly can be the nurturer later, but in those early stages, there just isn't any question. The family is an agent of change. The marriage of a man and a woman, with equal partnership, with natural complementary differences, and value and respect for self and others, can make the world a better place. It's also important, and I noticed uh, in a previous discussion in this room, that they talked about the fact that it was the education of mothers more than anything else that reduced maternal mortality. And we believe, and it points that out in this book, how important it is to educate a mother. We need to break the chain of inequality with a loving and supporting family that will remove any barriers to schooling because an educated woman has more to offer on an equal level as a wife and as a partner to her husband. She has a positive impact in the lives of the children as a role model, and the impact multiplies in neighborhoods and communities. Family-focused health care. If you'll notice in the book on MDG4, it's a, it's a masterpiece. Uh, and people who have read it with medical backgrounds will say that there's information in that chapter that will save lives. And so if you have an opportunity to get this book on to people who work especially in developing countries, there's information there that will help them to save lives, both in that chapter and the chapter on maternal health. 
The most successful strategies for improving child and newborn health outcomes focus on the family. I'm going to move through. I think my time is about up. So we can improve maternal health by educating and empowering the whole family for supporting their pregnant wives and daughters. Husbands and, and extended family can make a great difference in helping a woman to have a successful pregnancy. The benefits of marriage, physical health, mental and emotional health, and social productivity. Within a well-functioning family, strong, committed marital relationships transmit appropriate ethical, cultural, and religious values to children in an atmosphere that emphasizes the interconnectedness, complementarity, and responsibilities of family members. So I, I'm excited to see you here, to see that you're interested in promoting motherhood and the importance of a woman in a family, that the family is the agent of change that can make a difference in our society. And just has been said by many other speakers before me, it's time for us to take the initiative and go forward and promote this cause so that we can turn around the problems that have developed in society. Thank you.